Oh, hey, I like change. That's why I put the camera today. You see, I always wondered who I would be if this one thing about my life changed. Today, I'm going to figure that out. Well, that sucks. Imagine this. You play a video game for a long time, and you immediately recognize this one video game character. Now, take that character, put that character as the main focus on a movie poster, and make the movie about a lame and original character that has nothing to do with the character you put as the movie's main focus. Why? Video game adaptations have now become a recent trend in the industry. Lately, video game adaptations like The Last of Us on HBO, the Super Mario Bros. movie, and Five Nights at Freddy's have become major hits that, honestly, were really surprising, yet not at the same time. You see, video games are one of the greatest ways to tell the most innovative stories ever, with players being able to interact with them and even make their own stories. Ever since its conception, video games have been undermined for many reasons, mainly because how would the blue hedgehog make a deep and profound story? The thing with video games is that it is full of creativity, with them usually being cheaper than making a show or a movie, the stories of video games can be more accessible in a way that players themselves can interact with, increasing the immersion that movies and TV shows can't normally replicate. But these guys get a lot of flack because they are seen as violent or offensive in some ways, but why? They are technically more readily available, but in this age, they are about as accessible as pirating movies. Not only that, but there are also movies and shows that are also violent and offensive for some people. The same thing applies to any other forms of media, so why video games specifically? Well. Kids love video games, and depending on what they play, they might harness the unwanted influence of more mature titles. But what I'm saying is that video games can tell great stories, just as movies and TV shows. So why do video game adaptations get a lot of flack? Well, let's take a look at some of the greatest video games ever with a profound story. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. One of my favorite games of all time, so I played this game way long after its release and just after this dumpster fire had ended. I still love the story, being set centuries before the events of the prequels and giving Star Wars a breath of fresh air of new locations and culture. Gameplay wise, not the best, but it's still fun. But RPGs like this title are prime candidates for being adapted to the big screen and was the first ever video game to make a major adaptation on the big screen to Italian plumbers. So, Super Mario Bros. Not a bad choice, but an odd one at best. Remember, this is the early 90s, and Super Mario Bros. was a pretty popular gaming franchise at the time. And the story in the Mario games is pretty straightforward. An Italian plumber rescues a princess from an angry turtle. Yeah, that makes a good story for a movie. Let's do that instead of adapting other titles like Final Fantasy that have an actual story that's well suited for the big screen. For those who are wondering why a Sonic movie didn't release at the same time as the 1993 Mario movie, recall this picture. Imagine this was in the 90s, and it might have been much worse. So let's start with one of the game. <laughs> so let's start with one of the biggest challenges of gaming adaptations. The first problem is finding a story suited for the big screen and trying to outdo the game it's adapting. That's actually two things. Some adaptations have failed due to there being little story to implement and the result of forcing a popular title into a cinematic world is messy. Take a look back at the 1993 Mario movie. Remember that formula or story for Mario games is to rescue a princess from an angry turtle? Well. The movie took that story a bit further and decided to change it. The Koopas are actually intelligent dinosaurs who got hit by a meteor and sent to another dimension and they've returned to rule over Earth. It's still the same story at heart, but the movie itself doesn't feature most of the iconic things the Super Mario franchise has. Like, they didn't even include references or gameplay mechanics from past games. Stunts like these where movie producers try to make the source material more appealing to the big screen just somehow make it look worse. And that's one of the biggest challenges in adapting video games. Even if you pick the right game for the right story, 
There are still chances that producers might change bits and pieces of the source material to make it feel more appropriate for the big screen, and the result can either make the changes look better or make it worse. Adapting a video game into a movie or TV show is not an easy thing to do. In one way or another, games and movies share and borrow techniques from one another in delivering the core narrative and developing the characters, which leads us to the next hurdle for adaptations, having different audiences. Cinema is a spectator audience. People watch the movie, and they only get the information presented, the point of view that the people who made the movie want to show them. Video games, on the other hand, allow the audience to have more opportunities with how they want to immerse themselves in the story. You can interact with elements of the game world, and you aren't limited by a set amount of time. So you, as the player, are allowed to set the pace of the story in any way you see fit. Basically, games can go heavier into the background story of the game world, because they can just leave it there around the game for the player to find, whether it's required for the actual story or just some fun little tidbit the developers left to make the world feel more alive. And that can be done in a variety of ways like snippets and loading screens, landmarks, collectibles, notes, audio files, or even books and texts found within the game. As a result, games can trickle more information to the player without having to take them out of the game. Cinema can't do that. Extra story elements have to be shown to the audience, like a flashback or a lengthy explanation of sorts, and that runs the risk of taking the viewer away from the current events. What often happens here is that a lot of detail is lost, so there has to be either some information that the audience is expected to know already, or they need to change something so that the new medium can deal with it. Sure, they can give you a lore dump, but that isn't a great way to keep the audience invested. It's the same sort of deal when you also have another fair question. Why is it so hard to adapt a book to a film? Different mediums have different strengths. Some things have to be cut or changed for it to work when transitioning to a different medium, and there will always be some setbacks as a result. The next problem is Hollywood. Video game adaptations suck because they are made into cliche and generic blockbuster garbage. Hitman is a perfect example of this. One of the best parts of the games is trying to work out how to get from point A to point B, utilizing the environment and your tools to your advantage while sneaking and trying not to get caught. The movie only took the name and the signature look and then made a generic movie. In the film, none of the gameplay we see in the games is shown here. There's no planning because there is nothing to plan for. Sticking to the source material is somehow a challenging thing for adapting video games to cinema. How come we have multiple adaptations of Resident Evil, yet none of them are true to the bones adaptations? The series sure has some pretty cheesy moments, but the lore of the franchise is really interesting and would be suitable for live action. But they just couldn't do it! What's with it with creating original characters who have nothing to do with the actual source material and are just baked in there for the cinema audience and not the audience the source material is aimed for? But luckily, we still have some good adaptations out there. Let's start with my favorite of the bunch, Arcane. God. This show is a blast. The art style, the writing, the characters, the story, the music, and the world. Everything is literal perfection here. Arcane is based on League of Legends, which already has a large amount of characters and lore. The show just spans only a small portion of that entire world, and already it feels like the settings of the show are so big and diverse. That just goes to show you how great this show is. I think this is a great addition to the League world, as most people only play the games for the games themselves and not a lot of people are really invested in the story of each and every one of the characters in the series since the gameplay or the credibility of League is what sells the people's attention. We get to see more of the characters and how they interact with each other and the whole premise of the show is that we are seeing the backgrounds of these characters before they became whatever they are in the games. Most people tend to overlook the rich lore of League and it's baffling since the stories for every character here are diverse and interesting. Arcane backs that up and proves upon it 
and we are left with an amazing video game adaptation. Castlevania is another excellent adaptation for a well-known video game franchise. The show is based on the NES game Castlevania III Dracula's Curse, a rather obscure title to adapt, especially for people who don't know Castlevania that well, including me. But I enjoyed the show, I like vampires, so I'm sold. Unlike Arcane, which emphasizes more on the stories for its characters, Castlevania adapts more stuff from the games, like the enemies for instance. There's a lot of variety when it comes to the creatures we see in the show, and it's not like we keep seeing the same battles happen over and over again. The story is great. Not as great as Arcane, but a great one nonetheless. I'm a huge Pokemon fan, so it's inevitable that I watch Detective Pikachu. It was alright. It's nice to see a Pokemon movie that's not about Ash or defeating all the Pokemon gyms, defeating the Elite Four and becoming Pokemon Champion. What really disappoints me in this film though are the designs for some of the Pokemon. Pikachu, cute. Charizard, awesome. Snorlax, I, I don't know. It looks fine, I just never imagined him with fur. The story is fine too, it's just another generic Pokemon plot, but it's nice to see Pokemon in live action and I think they did a decent job. The Sonic movies are decent too, just some family fun stuff and I like it. But my main problem with these films is it being live action. Something about seeing Sonic and a regular human being just kind of sets me off. It's the same sort of feeling I get whenever I watch the cutscenes from the 2006 game, which is why I believe the new Mario movie is better. After this abomination, it's finally time to see a Mario movie without it being in live action. And it suits well for Mario because most of the characters' designs wouldn't work out if they were done in live action. The story is good, Jack Black was awesome, and I really love all the references they put in the film. It is truly a gift to all Mario fans out there. Of course, we can't talk about all of these great adaptations without mentioning the bad ones. First of all, what the fuck? I've been a Monster Hunter fan ever since Monster Hunter World came out and played it a year after its release. By that time, I knew everything that there was about Monster Hunter. It was definitely a face of mine since I never played anything that resembled like Monster Hunter World. It is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. But the movie god all right so the movie begins with a group of hunters mainly the npcs or characters we see in monster Hunter world who are attacked by a diablos so far so good and then we cut right away to a bunch of military soldiers i mean there are guns in the game but not m16s by the way i'm going to spoil the entire plot of the film because it sucks so how are these soldiers going to arrive in the world of Monster Hunter. Well, force them to go through a giant sandstorm. Then the chick from the Resident Evil movies teams up with the actual Monster Hunters and Ron Perlman to hunt a bunch of monsters in a pretty bland desert setting only for Gormagala, one of the most badass looking monsters in all of Monster Hunter, my personal favorite monster, to show up at the very end of the movie and it cuts just right when their battle is about to start. What a great film, guys. You see, it did some things right. The weapons, the monsters, and the characters that were adapted from Monster Hunter World. But they had to go through all that effort to crap on the fan base and release a film that's just a walking pile of garbage. But beyond all this and my hatred for this goddamn movie, Video game adaptations do leave a lasting impact on the gaming culture. Successful adaptations can bring new audiences to beloved game franchises and contribute to the mainstream recognition of gaming as an art form. But that's not how it may work all the time. Video game adaptations, be it successful or not, can have some interpretations or changes to the source material that may draw in audiences that value or like those changes in spite of the actual purpose or message the original source material is meant for. For example, in the Sonic movies, you might expect that you buy a Sonic game, play a Sonic, and run around every state of America in an instant. This is why if you're gonna adapt a video game into a movie or a series, just 
stay true to the source material, otherwise it might end up with a butt ton of controversies. That's the thing about making a good adaptation, it's about finding the balance between faithfulness to the source material and the creative freedom needed for a different medium. Successful adaptations understand the heart of the game and build upon it rather than reinvent the wheel. Sure, you can add some changes or your own additions in the adaptation process, but always make sure that the fan base finds it understandable and should not conflict with the original intention of the video game. I finally got it! Change can either lead to good or bad things. So this time, I'm going to change myself by finding my glasses. Where the hell are they?